Welcome to the next episode in the Antioch's The Town That Got Lost historical journey, where we uncover the history of this once thriving copper mining town. With each episode, we will look at the various buildings and highlights from the 1914 to 35 operating period of this North Coast coast town, and then wrapping it up with the present to see what still remains in this forgotten town. In this episode, we'll focus on the Antioch's general store, or what was sometimes called the Granby stores. So where is Antioch's? Antioch's is situated on BC's north coast, at sea level, about 145 kilometers north of Prince Rupert, BC, near the end of the head of Observatory Inlet. It lies in a small protected bay called Granby Bay, or firmly named Goose Bay. The town is accessible only by boat or aircraft. So the general store, or Granby stores as it was sometimes known, was actually one of the first buildings built in Antioch. And you can see from some of the historical photos here, the uh, wooden forms going up for the concrete, for the, uh, the walls and um, uh, sides and that of the, of the building. And as this was a company town, all the buildings in town were actually built by the company Granby Consolidated. And it was actually built in 1912, so about two years before the first ore was actually smelted. And it was located on a small little point in Granby Bay at the center of the beach part of town or the business district of town. Um, most of the building was built out of concrete, um, but there was an extended portion made out of wood that extended out onto the wharf. And with this being uh, prime Antioch real estate right in the uh, center of town, there was always a hub of activity, especially when the steamships arrived with new visitors or um, returning locals or guests. Um, lots of goods and products as well um, would have arrived on those ships. So the building, um, good sized building, three stories, uh, 117 feet long and 60 feet wide. With the general store being in the center of the business district, it was surrounded by other buildings and services which included the government uh, telegraph office, the Granby Meat Market, wireless station, Bluebird Cafe, government liquor store, uh, the wharf storage shed, the townsite office, employment office, uh, the Dominion Customs office, and the hotel, which was just up the road on a wooden plank 2x12 road. Uh, the store was open from 8.30 a.m. till 6 p.m., but on Saturdays and paydays, they stayed open till 8 p.m. and also had half days being on Wednesdays. Uh, prior to 1920, um, before the Imperial Bank of Commerce opened, Saturday nights were very busy as everyone was paid in cash by the company and they were very quick to buy the latest goods with their hard-earned money. Uh, closest to the water on the store was the produce or green grocery section as they call it, even though most stuff was well wilted upon arrival as the boat only came Mondays and Thursdays if they were lucky. Um, they had a, a cooler for fresh milk and butter that came from Prince Rupert uh, when they could get it. So if they couldn't, uh, the company did try their best to supply fresh milk and they brought in about 10 to 12 milk cows. But as the, um, the sulfur from the smelter killed all the vegetation, there wasn't any grass around for these animals and they were fed imported hay and they were kept in a barn um, part of the year. And then the other part, you could see them wandering around town looking for any uh, scraps of vegetation that, that uh, may be about. Um, the milk from these poor animals was quite blue and watery. And every year when the government inspector arrived, he would have to condemn a number of these animals as being tubercular. Uh, the next section of the store was the hardware store, hardware section. Um, it also was combined or kind of semi-combined with the drug store as well. Uh, next to that was the clothing and uh, shoes section, men's and women's. And under the same roof, but with a separate en entrance, was the post office. Grammy Consolidated, which owned the town, was in the mining business and therefore had no intention of reaping excess of profits from their general store. Therefore, they revised the prices at the store to as close to cost as possible. The general store was also a weekly advertiser in the local newspaper, and not much unlike stores today, they would also have specials. Each department had their own ads showcasing the latest goods and fashions. They also had seasonal themes, which would highlight things like Christmas and weddings. Um, even those who participated in one of the many local sporting events were targeted for their hard-earned dollars. So what remains today of the general store? Well, one of the first buildings you see when you enter Granby Bay by boat is the general store, as it is set out on a small point in the bay. Uh, the big fire in 1942 destroyed almost all the wooden structures in the town, but the concrete shell and walls of the store still remain. 
Uh, the store is a lot bigger than it appears from the water. There's the long rectangular building seems like it goes on forever back into the forest when you're standing beside it. The front wooden portion on the dock that overlooked the water was no longer in place, but as this was a busy place for people, many items were discarded into the water near here. Therefore, it's a great spot for beach combing as many trinkets, coins, and other objects can be found in the gravel below the store. As you can see, there's a forest growing out of it now, but if you let your mind wander a bit and take you back in time, you can actually visualize the energy and the busyness of this area in the early 1900s. Uh, there's still lots of piping, saw blades, fire hydrant, bathtubs, and other objects scattered nearby. So that concludes our uh, story of the general store. Thanks for watching, and if you like this episode, keep watching past and future episodes. And as always, if you're interested in visiting this remote ghost town, please contact me to see how you can be one of the few people each year to be taken back in time to Antioch's.